Hello, everybody. It's your wonderful wind maid, your cruise ship servant, Sharkers Frotzy, ever and always at your service. I am coming to you live from vacation on my work laptop, but it is April 13, and my district just posted Season 3 April 12 patch notes just yesterday, so it would be remiss of me not to cover it, right? So, let's get on with my blind review of these patch notes, yeah? Good day, Strikers! We're here with more Omega Strikers update 4.0. We got some new things tripped up for you, ranging from new friend lists, new awakenings, custom game options, and new gameplay options to every Strikers. Keep reading for that. This will mark the beginning of a new season, so even though I had been absolutely killing it on my offline series, actually breaking Challenger for the first time, uh, that's where I'm peaking. I didn't get to mid-Challenger at all, but hey, I'm still very happy with getting Challenger, first and foremost. So let's see what's going on. New friends list, this boy's current game status, that's gonna be just really nice for more active streamers in this game, considering how I'm always just been a solo queue 99.9% .9 of the time. Solo queue, solo queue, solo queue. It's not gonna affect me much, but for everybody else, especially when you're waiting for your game invites in the lobby, that's gonna be really nice. Really, really good. Oh, out some custom games so your ping isn't high. Really nice once again, because even though, like once again, I am just a ranked demon without a doubt for all of my content, fact is, the community, both overseas, like the Japanese community and just, I guess, like the more English community, it is super high focused on custom games, and especially for tournaments too. Yeah, these are really just good changes quality of life overall. Good! W change, W change. Divergent base stats. Strikers now have different initial speed power stagger. Okay, let me read this all before I break it down. Each striker is currently on a tier of the new base stats, but we... But we these... But these stats will widely branch out in the future. On average, strikers received an increase to their base stat, their dampen damage, focus point styles, moving to 4.0. For example, in general, bigger characters will have more sp power and stat, but will be slow in contrast to smaller characters. These changes are also to help strikers develop their own unique themes and sharpen their identities. Also, this will serve as another balance over to us. Ooh, okay! Let me, let me quantify out my thoughts on this. I have been a beta player back when it was trainings, which were basically like your awakenings, but it was just like passively, you'd put them on kind of like Call of Duty perks or so before awakenings made their way over. And it went hated a lot of the fan base because they really get used to the beta training system and whatever stuff like that. I remember a lot of people like trying to find like cool builds, meta stuff, stuff like that or so, and that was a really cool thing. But I think Awakenings were a lot healthier because it was kind of fulfilling that mobile aspect of building your items in mid game and allowing you to have a lot more counterplay in the drafting and also like for the dev standpoint of balancing those Awakenings by a rotational basis. The fact that they are fleshing out these identities a lot more is really good, and I think it's a really good change for what it is the 4.0 Season 3 update. Because you have to remember, yeah, 4.0, so beta, Season 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Fact is, is in a lot of my, in a lot of uh, higher level understanding of Omega Strikers, and even my own series of School of Omega Strikers, there's a lot of role quantification for... Like you hear the term bruiser always brought out. That's like pe uh, that. Right, that's just like a pretty broad term. But I like to quantify things out for like, okay, what is a hard force striker? A striker who can hit the core with an ability and stun an enemy. So it hard forces the core past them. So it enjoy a dash punch, adds his abilities, Zen's IA dash or whatever stuff like that or so. Those are good hard forces. Then you have more speed strikers, so the ones are more inclined for dribbling, if you haven't seen my videos once again. So that would be Octavia, Kai, etc, 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 stuff like that. Who want to dribble and just force 50-50s on you, or just make it so you never touch the core. When, as soon as they get it, so it gets, prots, and then they just run away with it. So I really do think this is a really good change, considering how... Excuse me, at the top right there. I, well, I say change, but it's more like um, making each of the characters more unique, exactly as they say, considering how we've really had some intrinsic balancing from that or from that end, for instance. This is how Dubu, of course, has a naturally bigger hitbox compared to Luna, who has a naturally smaller hitbox or size bots. I think is ra rather the best way to uh, uh, identify and define that. Their size is just already intrinsically part of their kit, and you have to already weigh the pros and cons of picking that striker in case you already have like the size awakenings that could easily outvalue you right there. I think this is really good, and I'm excited. I'm just they're probably gonna outline it later on, but I'd really like to see how the dev team likes to quantify out 
what they consider is, oh, you're a speed striker, oh, you're a bruiser, oh, you're a hard force striker, you're a power striker, you're a goalie boy, whatever, stuff like that. I want to see what they quantify that, and maybe I'll... I, well, okay, let's, let's not get our hopes up. I might have to check it in-game. I do have it updated, so I could just easily tune into that for these fat stones rundowns, but I'll see how it, uh, how it pans out. New gameplay rule. We want to reward points for their sit, dribbling, and passing while further dis, uh, dis, uh, de incentivizing pin pony. so we're changing things up a bit. The new strike ability adjustments to open up room for new combos and many strikes are also shaking up optimal playstyles for everyone else. You can probably expect cooldown increases to strikers in future patches as we fine tune the game with these new rules. Okay, so the general rule of thumb, they're gonna increase cooldowns across the board. I think that's healthy enough. It makes I, I think that's healthy enough just because of like natural power creep if they're adjusting things right. These are only actually read what's going on. Hitting the core with an ability resets your strike cooldown once per ability cast. Interesting. That means you it's going to further incentivize a lot more uh 2v1 scenarios. And what I mean by this is not two players versus one. I mean situations when you are contesting two strikes over one. It's incentivizing you to combo your abilities. So an Octavia primary in uh, an Octavia has a strike versus like your strike. That's just a 50-50 straight up if the core is coming to uh, if the Octavia is trying to get the core past you. However, if she has her primary up, she could easily do something like strike uh, sorry, about then, like season two before, it was like primary strike, strike primary. Usually it would be primary strike because she had a wind up to primary. But it's basically two strikes versus one. So if you had no abilities, but she had her primary up, she's going to win. It's not a 50-50. She basically has everything at her fingertips. It's her battle to lose. Hitting the core with an ability resets your strike ability now, though, I think opens up a lot more room for error, especially if you have, like, quick strike, for instance. For strike, primary strike, you basically can contest up to three, 3v1, three if the enemy has no abilities. Granted, if you have enough room and if they ping pong it back to you anyway, but I think this is really good for helping out in corner scenarios, both offensively and defensively, with helping you grind out those corners and incentivizing, once again, the general player base to take note of, all right, I have these abilities, I need to force the agenda and push the core to the goal map one way or another. I think that's really, really good change overall. Hitting the core with strike now reduces your ability cooldowns. Oh, so this is just better dribbling overall. One thing that I highlighted, and I think it's... It is my most popular uh, School of Omega Strikers video w by a country mile is my episode on dribbling. I don't think any of my other School of Omega Strikers videos broke like 300 views, but the dribbling one, and I think it's also because it's my first, I know is like sitting around the 1,600, 700 view range, and for really good reason, because it has so much applicability, any striker can do it. It helps you offensively, defensively, midfielding, anything just like it helps every single position going midfield forward it helps you offensively defensively it buys you time for cooldowns it lets you stall out death timers for your own team if you're if you're losing members etc stuff like that hitting the core with a strike now reduces ability to runs i think this is going to be pushing the agenda for all play styles because hard forces will be able to get their combos up a lot quicker so julie just can dribble like maybe once or twice and then she has both dash and punch up kai can easily wait out like with a dribble or two for his blazing pace and barrage to come up, etc. Stuff like that. I don't know how much it's going to reduce his ability going on, so I might have to just be a little reactionary to this. But when I get back home and I get to play some Omega Strikers, I think I'll test this out. And I think it's really going to shake up how, uh, how people want to play the game. Because dribbling especially, a lot of people in the lower elos don't understand that like, when somebody starts dribbling, you have to answer it one way or another, because if they are dribbling, they're dribbling with the intent of, I'm getting an advantage out of this, whether I'm stalling for an ability cooldown, whether I'm stalling for my teammate to come up and be ready to combo with me, whether I'm just stalling so I can generate enough energy to force a burst, a core flip situation. So it's also, it's got those applicabilities on with just the immediate physical ramifications of I'm dribbling. So one of the defenders, one of the forwards has to come out and challenge me with their face, with an ability. If they miss with the ability, I got their ability out for free. If they challenge me with their face, that opens up a passing lane. And it's going to incentivize, I think, a very much more offensive metagame and force either the goalie to become a lot more active 
with helping out on the line, like the range droids, the Dross Cannon droids, such as Imees, Lunas will have to challenge with Whammies, with Dwitch Pops a lot more, whereas more defensive-minded ones, like like creation based like Atlas, Dubu, whatever, stuff like that, are going to have to really like communicate more with their strikers to say their strikers and forwards to say, hey, you need to get in this face because if they get it, because uh, if you do nothing, they're going to get to save all their resources to challenge me to a 1v1 and it's going to push a lot more of an offensive meta game for both, I think, goals to be more productive and trying to help disrupt it so that they don't get forced into a 1v1 and forwards to push this agenda or challenge this agenda so they'd always never get into that. I think this is a really, really interesting change and depending on if cooldown traits are still going to be in the table, so I'm immediately thinking of if Sparts survive another rotation, uh, that could easily be really stupid if Heavy Impact survives another rotation without being rotated out or nerfed. For instance, or of course like prime time, you could easily just drill so uh, prime time's in their drive, you easily drill so so much more problems. And it's gonna open up a lot more combo routes that we've never seen before. Or just pressure routes, but I was, I will have to see about it. I think this is very much so a very good change. Uh, I just think it's like it's gonna take the metagame to adjust for the lower end. For the higher end, dribbling is gonna become way more stupid, and it's going to mess with a lot of people's mind game or a uh, thought process of saying, okay, Juliet used her dash. That's 14 seconds, but she dribbled twice now. Does she already have it up? Do I need to move up and challenge her before she gets to the corner? It's gonna take some getting used to, but I think W chains overall. Custom lobby changes. Can now choose certain awakenings, draft, goals per set. How customizable? Very, very, very good in my opinion here. I think it's going to open up a lot more creative tournaments for if people just want to have really stupid situations such as, oh, let's have all starting awakenings just be like size or let's, let's do like, yeah, theme nights or whatever, stuff like that or so. Great for custom content, great for tournaments if they want to run stuff like that or so. Etc. 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 I think that's just a really just you know once again really good change for what the basis of the general community is for and especially for content creators for streaming stuff like that that is everything that you're asking for custom lobbies are I feel like a good eighty percent of Omega Stretch's content that I see brimming around Twitch YouTube whatever stuff like that and for really good reason. Season reset. Big changes to are here. Rolling out new season will feature all goodies we made before. Great rewards, auto cannon, and gold explosion. This isn't a seasonal reward, by the way. This is for everything you unlock once you get a challenger anytime in the future. Oh hey! I got a challenger explosion! I think they're still using like the no like the second place in the Omega Strikers turn explosion. But hey, that's really nice. Small little incentive. Top titles, yeah, I kind of expected that. Design new tower for anyone who reaches gold. A very low bar to entry. For that, I know that like um past stuff and whatever or past games like Overwatch have lamented adding gold cosmetics or like or, or, or uh, yeah gold gun cosmetics or like stuff tied to the ranked ladder. But for us, in, uh, in the major strike is a very much so smaller game. Reaching gold itself, as opposed to winning, like I think it was like a hundred matches a year and like three premium credits and you need three hundred to get a gold gun in Overwatch days. Granted, I'm an old Overwatch 1 boomer, so I may be spreading misinformation online, but that's beside the point. A very low bar to entry, helps incentivize people, gives them a cool reward. For us, very, very, very nice. Emote for each and plot, emote for playing a bunch of games. The fact is, like, it's just small cosmetic things that aren't going to be really restricting two people far off, or rather, it's not going to dilute our player base. It's just gold, it's fine. Most rewards will be based on your season peak, but the titles will be based on your leaderboard position. Yeah, fair enough. So, start standard at any other MOBA or whatever. Working on an external match history webpage for your tracker progress. Ooh! Considering how Core Strike GG has just really been our only resource, or one of our few only resources for uh, actually watching our like ELO grind up and down and whatever, stuff like that or so. But we've never actually had a dedicated uh, match history. That's really nice. I like that. Good chains! Or I say good chains, good improvements, good additions, rather. Maps and modes. Okay, give me a second, I need to sneeze. Alright, maps and modes. Ranked. Picking teams is getting in shakeup. We're introducing a couple of things to the game, I'll change up the whole striker draft. Snake draft, no mirror swap training, check it out. Add more game to game variants and add to the answer picking. Okay! So I am a huge MOBA head when it comes to watching, or when it comes to watching, spectating, and playing in traditional MOBAs. I don't play too much Dota, but I love watching the international. 
Uh, Elite, I probably keep up with the most. So I'm keeping up with all the uh, all Majoids. LCS, OEC, LPL, LCK, whatever, stuff like that. Uh, I played a good amount and watched Heroes of the Dorm. Heroes of the Storm, when it was still alive, I will always hate Blizzard for killing uh, that circuit, considering how they only let us rot for no good reason. Why? But the biggest thing that I loved about those MOBAs, what, well, just MOBAs in general, is the fact that um, drafting is always such a huge component when it comes to the strategy of the game. Games can be won or lost just based on your draft of, oh, this character soft or hard counters this enemy pit. This is a denial pit. I have to take it away from the enemy before they can get it themselves. Blah, 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 blah. And the fact is, even though like you can semi-draft, and I've always lamented it in my YouTube videos of, I love being third pitch, so I can fine tune my own strategy on the fly based on my teammates and based on what the enemies pitch. That's always been like my favorite position of being counter pitch, last pitch, you know, like round five priority, whatever stuff like that, however you want to call it. So the fact that slot trading immediately is in here. Okay, well, well let me, uh, I'll, I'll break it down piece by piece. I just read in the little preamble, but I need to actually see how it works. Snake draft. Teams now take turns picking their characters. Blue team pits one, red team pits two, blue team pits two, red team pits one. Okay, so standard snake draft for a three player, uh, for a three player team. Fair enough, fair enough. No mirrors. You can't pick the same character as your opponent. Try to earn three more characters. For my content, the fact that I just fight playing characters based on feel, or rather based on the fact that, you know, like I want to make more variety content than, oh, what was that one week that I did like six out of seven of my weekly up, uh, of my a daily uploads that week where I meet games, for instance. Yeah, variety. I want to spice up my variety and my content. And the fact is my striker pool is very, very wide. I am very, very confident in my pool. I think the uh, the fact that um, more characters are going to have to be brought out is really good for just developing players overall, like both from a competitive standpoint and also just for the balance of the game. Because my initial thought process was if we ever did get more strikers past the Mako, I was thinking my pipe dream was each team gets two bands, so four strikers banned overall. The forwards did a ban, and the goalies did a ban each. Because it's, it can always be split on the solo queue ladder for what is really going to be the biggest problem. And the fact that we're not going to have any more mirrors anymore is really big. Because I'll bring up um, the last Omega Strikers tournament that I watched. It was the rise from the Ashes Lan, I believe. And the biggest thing that I, that I pointed out, because I hate Zentaro, is that anytime he wasn't banned away he was picked like 99% of the matches on both teams for goalie whatever position blah 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 he worked pretty well alongside mirror matches from goalies for like Kai for like Rasmus for whatever blah 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 like yeah of course to find on the team but there's almost always a mirror match every single game and the fact is is like for mirror matches they can Oh, yeah, there's the immediate, okay, I can just diff the, and I can diff my enemy Juliet, I can diff my enemy Rasmus or whatever, stuff like that or so. But sometimes, mirror matches were just blown out of the water immediately because a, a rune mirror match, oh, I, I my team won first set and now I have a creation awakening and you don't. Well, I'm basically winning anything from here on. A Rasmus mirror and I got a size awakening. Oh, well, you're, you're just basically done for. You only have depth touches. I beat you on every single other ability. It just felt bad and... Like, you could easily just be shut out as soon as, like, even Awakening Draft or just Round 1, just, just due to how oppressive an enemy could be when it came to them, uh, when it came to them just getting a better draft. And yeah, I mean, if I would point you, like, a set, but then you're just locked out from the rest, that just felt bad. And at least for me, the flavoring, eh, mirror matches can sometimes be boring. I want to have that variety and just seeing how, uh, just for me from a viewer perspective, I want to have that variety and really get to see how things break down when it comes to, okay, what does my striker do against their striker that's better? Am I a better controller? Am I a better hard forcer, etc. stuff like that. It's just more fun from a viewing perspective, just overall, and I'm speaking just from my viewership base especially, and I think that's really, really nice, and will provide, once again, taking away, especially with it being a snake draft, taking away priority from the enemy, seeing what you could take away from them that would be a good link away, denying enemy pits, and once again, especially on the higher competitive end, getting to actually counter pick, as in directly take away characters from your enemy team, or build your own draft identity in real time against your opponents instead of just, oh, we both pit 
Juno at the same time now. Well, okay, this is our life now. This is really, really cool for the tournament end, even though I'm never going to participate in that end. At least for me on ranked, this is going to be really good for opening up what should be for coaching and what you should be doing in relation to understanding your team. Stop trading. Want your goal to go first? Trade them. You'll be able to trade before the pit phase for your team. Ban and free slots and faces has been such a incentive for players to trade. I'm probably not going to be trading too much. I think, I mean, I did say I like uh, third slot priority, but I, it's not like it's going to be a deal breaker for me. But if nobody else trades, I'll always take third pitch if I can. Because being able to throw a wrench in the enemy's plans with a good counter pitch for, oh yeah, it's like they pitched Octavia or so. So I can pitch somebody super offensive to make sure she never gets to play the game, for instance. Oh, they picked Juno or something. Maybe I can pitch now or at or somebody who can easily eat the Blobos contest with their own creations and not worry about the war of attrition or be able to control the midfield just as much on them. I feel like those are really just good things that you can easily do in terms of just, once again, like I just said, controlling the enemy team, understanding, hey, what are their power points and being able to come up with an effective game that can help you win set one and then from there on, try to snowball your victory. This really, really good overall and once again too, the fact that, you know, sometimes you just get screwed over on your pits, on your pit cycle, really hurt. So amazing changes i am such a big fan of i know my uh my community both in the youtube comments and in my discord community we're talking about how i am going to be shaken up by these changes but these are amazing first and foremost and i'm really excited to play os and record against once i'm back in town map rotations Core and core in inky's in atlas's lab out imi's lab out i think because they said above that they were buffing everybody's stagger, especially that it's going to uh, 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 that taking out what is commonly seen as two of the most offensive maps, considering how you could do so much damage with a good detonation of the gravity well in Atrus Swab, or just Imi's app existing, meaning that whole kills, uh, cheese kills were way, way, way more prevalent, means that we're going to be looking at more control focus for when it comes to for uh, let's face. Uh, for when it comes to understanding how the metagame works. Now, I say that when Inkies is in, but I think with just Awakening Rotation and understanding more on how Inkies works itself, just because everybody's had a season enough to play it before it rotated out, I think we're going to just have to see how the combos work, because especially the striking, the ability cooldowns, is really going to change it up. But of course, I, I think still, without a doubt, Quarry in Core is the best designed map in Omega Strikes, not just for the versatility, but for the fact that both teams have to constantly adapt in the fly. It is just really good in general to just have that in on a general rotation standpoint. I think I if I could always keep a map in, it would be Quarry in Core without a doubt. But... With, uh, but once again, like, it'll lend itself to many playstyles, both maps, and have to force people to understand their win conditions. Because for Inkies, you could easily be blown out, you could be water cannoned, lose a goal, lose a set. You have to immediately understand your win conditions, whereas Tor and Tor, your win conditions are always changing based on the configuration. So I think it's going to be a really, really interesting go. I hate the only village, personally, is still in, but what's that rotation then? Uh, so, Torian, Inkies, Oni Village, Night Market... Gates, Tycho, and... Did I say Night Market? Uh, no, Demon Dice. So that's our 7-map rotation at the moment. Copy that. So the ones that aren't in are Atlas's, Imi's, Atten. At the moment. Still hate that Oni Village is still in, but that's just my preference. I just hate Oni Village overall. But overall, I think this is healthy enough. Even though I am very biased as a Rasmus player towards both... Atlas is in Imies. I don't mind the map rotation at all. I'll adjust to it. And quite frankly, I think they've definitely had their overdue for how kill heavy this meta can be. Can be. Cosmetics. We worked up a couple cosmetics and some goodies if you're rich. Big spender for 2 million credits. Interesting. New community name dates, emoticons, a gold on his rank reward as before. Trading card badges, wallpapers. Ooh, well, that's gonna be nice for the collector. I might buy myself a badge or so by buying some cards. We'll see how it goes. Okay, finally, we get to Striker Balance. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Strikers are getting changes their base stats. We're paying every strikers, so there will be lots of numbers here. All right. I mean, 
Oh, Sass, no swipe, especially low mid range, Serpent Air Claws now, Cyber Swipe, got decreased by one second, but that still can be pretty nice. Fact is, she's always revolved around, like, compared to other strikers with Blinks Teleport stuff like that, so, like, that could be, like, Estelle, for instance, or, like, Juno, who, like, can uh, jump or so. Cyber Swipe can be super oppressive, but once Aimee commits it, the entire gravity around where she can make plays with putting a Firewall essentially, or where she can annual glitch pops immediately changes on a dime. It, with, without a doubt, is, I think, her most pivotal ability for setting herself up. So, a little buff for her end would be nice. And fact is, she can easily struggle against other strikers who get a lot more immediate impact to where, with their kit, whereas Cyber Swipe is basically her only immediate ability, as everything else needs setup or time to wind up or fetter out. Whereas, even with Cyber Swipe, she has a wind up to it. So, yeah, this is totally fine enough. I mean, one second's not gonna change too much, but I think it's just healthy. Asher, less speed, more power, more stagger, breakthrough, buff strike cooldown. <laughs> Reduced from own goal zone to own, I said uh, buffed from own goal, goal zone to own side of the field. Interesting, interesting. This is gonna help her just be that big body and contest as she uh, as she'd want to. Because before, I say before, no more, without a doubt, Asher's or the uh, the general Asher game point is just so it gets run away. Beat the enemy out in a 50 50 or so, and then just 50 50 goalie with your like 50 50 or 2v1 your uh, the goalie with your barrier beam strike, whatever, blah blah blah. Your breakthrough should even stun them, make it a 3v1. This will help her immediately help on the defensive side and help goalies a lot more. The power angle will help her own dash punches, her own dash barrier beam, blah blah blah, stuff like that or so. The hit in size will make it so she's more, definitely more of a juggernaut. So I do, I do like how they're playing to more of what her the original fantasy was of her compared to where she basically is. I say I wouldn't say she's a dwarfed speed striker. She's that weird balance between soft force and speed striker. But uh, but I think this is a really unique identity that they're pushing with her now of making it so that she can brawl out a little bit more. Just especially so with her being a big looking body in the field when it comes to what's his face when it comes to on the uh, when it comes to playing against other like bruises for instance so that could be like zentaro or like rasmus or like kazan or so she can sometimes struggle because as soon as she's displaced it can be a problem for her to effectively use her abilities in a defensive manner to just or to basically tit for tat hit back so giving her just increased 25 power is going to make it so that you want to challenge her, you better have the stagger or the reins to do so, and she can command just a lot more presence with her face now. I do like it, and at least like for the breakthrough sides, the strike cooldown reduction did get hit too, but the fact that Asher, like, I'm thinking a bit about this from both forwards, falling back, or just Doi Asher's moving forwards, to make it so that they're not restricted to their own goal zone, but own side of the field, like goalie gears are restricted to your side of the field, not your goal zone only. I think that's a really nice change overall, because I don't see too many Asher goalies nowadays. I feel like when it comes to creation strikers, she's very much so um, a, a creation goalie, so Atlas, um, Dubu, especially so, she's very easily outmatched. And when it comes to brawling strikers, uh, brawling goalies, dude, I've seen more Rasmuses and Jazans pop up, or of course right now it can brawl just as well enough too. But I don't see as many Asher goalies, so I think this will help her out in her goalie pit rate too. Uh, Atlas, base stats, speed down, power down, stagger up. Interesting. So less power, making him definitely more defensive minded, making him exactly so. With his bigger size, or slightly bigger size rather, he's not as big, but he still has a sizable impact i didn't mean to make that a pun but you know what i meant right there interesting making him more of a juggernaut fair enough going to impact him definitely and quite frankly unless you were already pressuring atlas before for kills it's not like you're going to get kills on him or special interventions out of him you're looking to pressure his forwards more so i think this is fine enough for bringing him in line with how powerful he has been it's not like he's been overpowering, but he very much so does get to stop out of the hard force metagame, which has been, you know, prevalent enough for the biggest win conditions. Uh, Drek. Shotgun was developed an upgrade to his active camouflage. He shifted some of his power towards the secondary to give... help him relieve his dreams as an assassin when he ambushes his opponents. 
Fair enough, because especially so, you just used uh, Xenocloak as a tempo play, kind of like a blazing pace more often than not. Not as much for the mind games as I'd think, just more for the speed boost, or just, or not even, or I say mind games, even just for, yeah, that assassin potential, which I initially thought Jet was when I first started playing. More speed, less power, less dagger growth. So they are playing more into that assassin character of him, of making it so that he is not going to be able to brawl back as much as he'd like against enemies. Instead, he is looking to just deal his damage, get in, get out. And especially with his power being hit too, yeah. Lock and load being hit as well really hurts, but that is, I think, very much it was aimed at the very higher end of the metagame. Because once again, like, lock and load is easily one of the best abilities in the game just for it is a ranged 50 50 at any situation and it forces people to have to position themselves knowingly with their body in front of the core for instance or wait out strike timings which can easily displace how they want to start an offensive push or something or so xenocode rework Become invisible and gain 50% speed for one second using the ability during this invisibility will reveal you make this ability hit 25 percent harder cool tip is wrong don't worry okay Interesting enough, I think this will help further his ultimate combos with Xenocloak, ultimate hit, have that burn going, and then if you want to lock and load, one, two, get somebody destroyed. But I think this is going to be really good for single on targets, because the big things about lock and load being a good ability is that it's a range strike, it is a 50-50, and if an enemy decides to eat the pellets to protect the core so they can keep pushing it, that is hitting their stagger, even if it's lower now, thanks to the base stat adjustments, but it means that their stagger and the War of Attrition is slowly escaping from them. They will slowly be weathered down if your goal is keeping tabs and helping out, if your other forward is keeping tabs and helping out, which means you can easily assassinate somebody from 50% health with an ultimate and even just like one lock and load thanks to the adjustments, and even just like one good uh, awakening would also really help you out on this end. I think this is really good in carving out a better identity for Dredd, because he's always just been a very just solid, good pick overall. He can midfield, he can goalie, he can be that hard force striker with a point blank lock and load. But I think carving it out so he fulfills a much more traditional assassin role is really interesting from the dev team. I'll have to see how the Dread mains really think about it because I don't play him too much myself. But I think this is really, really interesting for what is going to be new season shakeups. Dubu. In addition to his base stat changes, Dubu is getting his old larger strike size back. Yeah, there you go. You can exactly see. Yeah. Strike size was a member of Contentious considering his bigger hitbots. So interesting. He is getting the biggest speed nerf it's seen so far from like 450, 440 for others, 435. But 300 started to compensate, whereas Atlas got to like uh, uh, 1400. He's getting 1500. Interesting, interesting. Dubu's has already always been amazing at any level or so. So we'll have to see how much the, uh, the speed hits him. And if people want to run more momentum boots on him more than strike shot, for instance, that I've been seeing. So we'll just see how it goes. Era. More speed, less power, more stagger. Interesting. The Witching Beam is plus 70 power instead of plus 70% power. Wording difference. It's not like I really saw too many allied bewitching beams for the power. It was just more just for the range, you know, strike potential and everything like that. So we'll have to see how that really impacts things, all things considered. But making era defined speed striker, exactly so. Estelle, more power, less stagger grow. So just becoming traditional batline carry stats, basically. Less stagger so she can't do as much or so, but a little bit more power befitting of her ranged abilities and a little bit more poke. But fair enough. Kind of expected something like that for her. Fini, more speed, less power. Gonna suck for all the glass cannon finis with less power, but quite frankly, you're already hitting hard enough, and if your teammates are keeping an eye, you're gonna be dealing enough. More speed is really the biggest thing, considering how for goalies and even for forwards too, like with my most recent videos, fact is Fini struggles considering how she doesn't have a traditional movement ability. That is in place of triple take for her secondary slot, so she has to commit her body so much more. So giving her just as much speed as what is era starting now is Actually, you have a very, very good healthy change for her. Fanin means just keep winning. Joey, more power, a little less stagger, growth, but more base stagger. Open her broad a little bit more. Flying Phoenix, secondary, 18 to... When did I say it was under 14 second cooldown before? I know I said it earlier, but oops. But that's going to make her scary enough. It's going to make it so that she can't scale as well with the stagger growth change. But it does mean... That she can easily try to snowball early sets and try to just snowball a victory from there with good awakenings from there on. So we'll have to see how that works for her. But 
still think she's just in a healthy enough state. It just means that she's more of a offensive brawler, more than just a bruiser. Brawler, bruiser connotations. I've seen thrown around in MOBAs all the time. Brawler means you are looking to deal damage up front and confirm kills. Bruiser means you can hit back, it's like you can get in the fight, you can hit back and survive well enough. That's more on the sustain end, just based on your health or based on your abilities. Whereas brawlers are just looking to get that first punch in. And for Juliet, I think that's winning more into that brawler metagame, especially so. I don't know a lot of MOBA terms, but if you're if you played more stuff like that or so, you might be more familiar with what I'm trying to reference here. Uh, Juno, less power, more stagger, making her more survivable, and making it so that her blobos aren't as oppressive. Fair enough, considering how a good part of in Juno's game is making it so the enemies have to set them the blobos, or giving her way more core control than they'd like, so, fair enough. Uh, Kai, getting the best speed? 475, holy crap, dude. 475 speed, considering how goalies be going down as much as Dubu's 435 so having 50 speed off the top of your head that's already a glass cannon basically on oh like already on top of you that's already a two stat spark of speed on top of you dude I'm gonna see so many more ties I feel the power is so negligible granted yeah he can deal chip damage with broads or he can hit you with his digital blast or so but fact is if you're too close to the edge to get hit by a digital blast that's your fault if you're already low enough to be staggered away and killed by broads at your own fault. Kai just... I think Kai is honestly the biggest winner of the patch. What the heck? And I already struggle with Kai's. So that's not gonna be fun for my end. But without a doubt, I feel like... Unless there's another striker who gets 475, so maybe Octavius will down the list here. Yeah, okay, Octavius will down the list. I think not, I think uh, Kai already just won the patch. Oh, it's on. Less power, less stagger. Especially since they are getting more stagger, or just like getting more residual stagger built into people, and with these changes around, this is really gonna hurt Kazan. Considering he already had four body rotations, yeah, the power hit's already huge, but the fact that he can't brawl as much as he'd like as well is really big as well. Luna got more power. I don't know why she isn't bolted, but fact is, that is stupid. Luna's falling out, I feel, in exchange for the fact that her smaller hitbots and the fact that she can't draw away as br a brawl as well. She relies so much on her combo setups with open lanes to get her goal forces or just, you know, once she uses a traitor, once she uses, or, or rather, once she uses her Dwemi, she doesn't want to boost away from you, otherwise she's losing so much store pressure if you're brawling in front of your face as like an S or something like that. That should have been your back a lot more because she's fallen out a good bit, I feel. Macho. Less speed, more power, more stagger. So she's fulfilling that bruiser situation right there, especially. Drum and bass giving more haste. We're gonna see a good more, amount more macho, I feel. I think, especially like with the later end of my... Uh, uh, the later end of my Season 2 experience, it just went back to the traditional Dubu Kai Atlas for the goalies that I'd seen. And even though, yeah, you can get more nows, more machos or so, people figured, uh, pe uh, people figured out how to play against those. And, you know, just tried and true went too. So making Macho a bit more of a bruiser, considering how she can easily lock down an enemy forward and go tit for that tat with them as a forward, or being able to support a team more as a goalie with more drum and bass speed, that's really good. Now gets more speed, less power, less stagger. Fair enough, she already had enough health. So she, uh, uh, she already had enough health on its own base, and well, if she was going to get hits, she's going to get hits. She's not going to be the best kill confirmer, but she could easily follow up, you know, just sort of base enough. So making it so that she's more defensive minded, and that she has to think more about do I need to use my proximity drone for core control, for speed, or just for the health of my teammates themselves is really good. Making it so that she's a little weaker makes it so that it's not just, oh, I can just use it for free. I can use this one component of proximity drone without thinking about the other component. The one component of core control versus the other component of health. Uh, Octavia. Flow state. Just got a lot faster with the base speed increase. You're doing it preemptively, give her a tuning and remove the competition. Yeah, another 475 once again. Speed strikers, I think, are going to be the name of this new meta with how stagger has been. Yes, 100 stagger is a loss, but fact is, most abilities are doing around the 250 range anyway. You have to remember that without any tweets to their, like, head, without tweets to power or whatever, stuff like that or so. And even then, some of the more mid 40 strikers are getting hits to their power, like now, for instance, whatever, stuff like that or so. 
So huge bitches power nerf to Octavia. Yeah, fair enough. She was not offensive minded. Her stature, of course, is getting lower as well. Four stage getting a nerf too. But at the same time, 475. Speed helps you dictate when you can take a fight, when you can disengage the fight, when you can win core control, or when you want to peel back and be a sudden defensive lineman. Kai and Octavia, without a doubt, still, in my eyes, are the biggest winners of this patch. Speed is going to be king, especially with stature changes made into offense, isn't going to be as much of a immediate win condition if your team is both for it, I feel. It's going to be stupid, but I do think Snake Draft, especially if you're like, Kai is more of a ubiquitous pit, but if you try to draft Octavia early, for instance, people can still draft against you on that end, but I do think Octavia and Kai are just going to, once again, win, 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 win. Rasmus! 100 more stature. I love the changes. Rasmus is the biggest winner. Nah, that's just me being a Rasmus main. Uh, throwing him more as a bruiser, considering how he can struggle sometimes against the uh, against enemies when he has to commit his face or when Santa. If he misses a pendulum swing, it's all over. Helps him out. Rune getting a little bit more stature. Interesting. I I think that they'd make Rune a little bit faster, for instance, or so they had to touch him or so, but. I mean, keeping keeping him and Rasmus just kind of like the perfect midfield line for base and whatever stuff like that. Not, it's not like he really needed more speed, because of course more runs are just run like kits anyway. So I think I convinced myself out of that logic. Just keeping him base is fine enough, and just the stature changes a little bit more. Once again, helping him survive a little bit more for Rasmus, helping him be a bit more of a better bruiser. That's just overall changes anyway. Vice, an upper tier to play. Vice is real star. We're turning down our volume just a touch. I think it was really my video yesterday that published about it. That was exactly so about Vice being able to control not only the stature of the enemies, but how the entire energy game for Core Flips revolved around Vice. Power going up, stature going up just due to overall changes, but her damage multiplier, not bad multiplier for chain hits from Power Toward is down, and Thunderstrut stun is down. Very big, because the fact that Thunderstrut, even when you're at full health, Full stagger. More often than not, people will evade it, so they just don't get stunned overall and lose onus on the play. Is really a huge controlling component. So the fact that it's not as punishing now is really big. Helps people challenge 50-50s for vice teleports in immediately after to strike the core. And once again, multiplier at smallest things. She's getting just a bit more base power amped into her kit. Pun again, unintentionally. But this helps this helps curb the fact that Vice. Nets Toluna is one of the best energy controllers in the entire game. I think as much as I do love and play Vice, that is just a healthy change overall. It's just a bit sad, nothing to make him feel better. Less speed, 30 more power, 50 more stagger, and a cooldown to Bellringer. Yeah, this is, that is really stupid. Nets mains are going to rejoice in the fact that he just got a prize fighter stat for free and a little bit more forever now. That is really stupid. Ets could be really good, but once again, I think it's just going to come down to how people read the meta for what is a speed game, what is a power game. You'll have to see. So if it's like an Ets versus an Octavia or so, Octavia totally just run away from Ets. It's just a no contest at that point, then, in my opinion. Zen. More speed, less stagger. Interesting, considering how Zen is just so was that bruiser in essence of wanting to force so much. More speed is very interesting, considering how prevalent he's always been. Less stagger, though, means he will want to defensively use his special a lot more, though, so we'll have to see. But, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just measure it out. We'll just see how things go, yeah? Okay, Awakenings. All sports are rotated out. I still never got to assemble with Zodi in any point of my Magic Strikers career. Oh, rest in peace, me. But, healthy enough, I feel, if you're going to be rotating a lot more things in. Just fact is, right, Stadger said he's been out. Orbs, maybe? Can we get Orb Zodia in, for instance? Uh, Boat Diff is out, Stadger Swatch is out, Fighter Fight's out, Glass Cannon's out. So immediately, what dreams to me is uh, these two. Fighter Fight, of course, was just used more for the budget so kits component, more than the actual fight or fight, but it still was a defensive trait. Stadger Swatcher going out means that Unstoppable is the only trait left in for defense, basically, because we had... Yeah, Stature Swagger was in, Spider Resilience is out. Uh, with Stature Resilience and Stature Swagger out, unless we get new defensive awakenings, you really just only have Unstoppable left over. So, more base Stature, but less ways to basically say, oh, now you can't kill me. Because Stature Swagger was very much so a awakening that could turn the game and deny a complete win condition. It was a game winner on its own, without a doubt. So, the fact that it's going out means we're going to have a huge shakeup. Both diff, I mean, we, we already had, um... 
the one that replaced Super Surge, the big three that replaced it, was already impact the is going up, already have heavy impact itself, so fair enough. Glass Cannon was also a huge game, turning on its own, and was its own mini game, separate win condition. I hate to see it rotate it out, because I do think it's one of the best balanced awakenings, and one of the ones that always was a ticking time bomb on a team's head, whether they had it or the enemy did, so it's not to see it gone, but let's see what they got. Reptile Remedy, new. Gain 350 stagger and heal 3% missing stagger per second for 3 seconds whenever you strike the core. Ooh! I like this! I just talked about how we had two survival awakenings rotated out in Stagger Swagger and Fighter Flight. Actually, three, actually, because uh, Spider Brazilians, too. So the fact that we have one, which is entirely posted on the whole basis of attrition, is really, really interesting to me. Because you immediately think to your midfielders, who, once they are started out, they have trouble playing to their position, playing to their role, and it really sucks for them. So I'm thinking for like an Estelle that gets staggered out, for a Rune that gets staggered out. So the fact that you get, uh, whenever you strike the core, you can immediately buffer yourself back up. Considering how the only percentage traits that were uh, the only percentage uh, awakenings that ever, or uh, gear awakenings that ever worked on percentage of health was. Siphoning one and Stinger. So the fact that we have a defensive one that will get your stature back by percentage. Well, actually, Vicious also by percentage too, but you know what I mean. While also giving you health. But Vicious is a gear. This is Awakening. I think this is an amazingly designed Awakening here. Because it's not like Satisfied where you are just immediately going to lose. Oh, I accidentally hit this enemy below 50% HP. Now he has increased stature gain and... Uh, speed without a doubt. That is just a lose lose win condition. This one here makes it so you have to still be involved with striking the core, but it rewards you for doing so. And it's a, once again a really good mind game back and forth of pressuring the enemy so they can't uh, get back to full stature. I really like this trait. Minor losses gain 15% size and one power point per 1% bonus size. So, reading off the top of the dome 15 power, 15% size. We just had both different rotate outs, so this is the replacement. Just thinking about it. So, we have Demo, we have Amun Titans, we have Powerhouse. Could be really good for goalies, I feel. I think this is more of a goalie inclined gear, or just a snowball gear. If you already have somebody taking Amun Titans for you and you're an Ets or something like that, you just run away with it, for instance. Really hurts for the enemy. I think this is just a win more, or I think it's a goalie or a win more awakening. Don't know how I feel about it, but. Uh, I mean, it's power versus a 5% scaling that you get from both diff. So, I think it, uh, we'll just have to see. But otherwise, it's just a, it's just both diffs um, rotate in, rotate out. Rampage. Gain 5% size. Whenever you destroy or assist in destroying an enemy bear, gain 7.5% more size. We'll lose additional size when killed in between sets. Huh. So... Uh, is this the stupidest awakening that they've made, everybody? Just think about it here. You only lose the size when you're KO'd or between sets. So imagine this. A game goes to goal 5, but both sides have lost all goal barriers. Assume this is a 2 barrier map, so let's say like Carter and Core. Round 1, 2 barriers. Round 2, 2 barriers, so that's 4. Round 3, 6. Round 4, 8. Round 5 up to 10. So you really have 5% size, then uh, to start with, then 7.5 size each barrier. So you, then you're going up to about 12, 19, actually with the 0.5 that's 20, you're going to 27.5, then 50. Like the fact, like, uh, you are seeing where I'm going with this. You could easily become the biggest striker on the field, not counting if you already had Might of the Colossus. To scale with that, not counting if you had a Mun Titans, not counting if you had Powerhouse with that. Like, this is without a doubt one of the most snowbally traits I have ever seen. What the heck? I'm struggling. I just complimented the dev team for Reptile Remedy, but here's where my alarm bells are ringing off with Rampage here. Yes, the initial size increase is so small, but freak accidents happen so much. Yeah, it's destroy your assist, not just when a dual is gone, but the fact is this will happen mm, so much. 
It takes one barrier to basically almost equate Might of Colossus, a Built Diff, a Big Fish, a Among Titans buff, a Powerhouse buff. At two barriers, which is just the span of one round that usually really take place between five seconds from each other, you're really better than all of those traits. And the fact that they're, like, yeah, you have to be KO'd for it, but if you have, like, survival, if you have an Atlas, if you have a Now, that's never gonna be a problem. Between sets, it's whatever. You can easily snowball this and run round. There's no upper limit to this. Prizefighter had an upper limit of 60%, uh, of our uh, three stats, of 60 power. The fact that Rampage doesn't have any. What is this trait, dude? Yeah, you're a bigger hitbox, but... Huh? I am scared for the future. I may be doomsday, and it'll, it'll still take me coming back from vacation to really try this trade out, but... Is this the stupidest trade that we've seen so far? Guys... Make fun of me all you want on this, but I think Rampage is the stupidest trait that's in the game here. Mark my words, I think this will take over the meta game. I, I, I am hot taking this. When I come back from vacation, if I'm not picking this first and foremost all the time, I feel like I'm throwing. Anyway. Oh wait, we have Stinger back. What the heck? You know, I just said Rampage is gonna take over the metagame. What the heck? We got Stinger. Wait a sec, we got Stinger and Adrenaline Rush back? Hello? Folks, we have not seen these since season one. So for all the newer age gamers here, Stinger, I said Glass Cannon was, I think, the most balanced trait, but Stinger was, without a doubt, my favorite trait out of Season 1 and was the biggest crutch because nobody understood how to battle for attrition back then. And the fact that you could just deny with, when, remember, when this was when Big Fish was in Awakening as well. Uh, Big Fish, Spark of Resilience, etc. Uh, and Unstoppable back in Season 1 days. The fact that you could just easily deny so much... Uh, enemy, uh, enemy, um, defensive staling with just this one awakening. Just with it being burned. Was really stupid. I do think these are really good balance changes, but the fact that it was just any hit meant that you just dealt 10% HP. Meant that two hits basically turned to three hits from any of your abilities was really stupid. So the fact that it's, they quantified that light hits will only deal a small burn, whereas normal hits are doing less of a burn are really stupid. No one just multiple players applied to the same target. Yes! Okay, really good for Stinger Awakening, uh, for Stinger Opening Awakening Pits, or back in Season 1 to where, um, the 8th Awakening in Draft was infinite, so Stinger games were just stupid. Really good changes, but this is the key offensive trait, and it still is, it still is really good in my opinion. It's still, 12 to 10% is still 2 hits, still convert to 3 on average, and with, you know, a, a stagger being changed across the board, I think this is just healthy enough. It's a really good trait, without a doubt, still, though. Adrenaline Rush, speed range from takedown, 100% to 40%. Without a doubt, you cannot have 100% in the current metagame. Put on refund on takedown, 5 to 10 seconds. I think that it's a really good change, because if you remember, uh, those of you that haven't played with Adrenaline Rush, your cooldowns are decreased by 1 second. And when I say that, it's not by, like, 1%. It's literally, your cooldowns are decreased by 1 second entirely for the rest of the game. Back then, so it was... Like, Juliet's, uh, new, um, Flaming Phoenix. 16 seconds now, it just become 15 seconds, no matter what. And then your cooldowns would, uh, your cooldown traits would stack on top of that. So that was really stupid back then. So the fact that they're making this more of, instead of it just being, we got a kill, now we can convert with speed and just outstrike the enemy. Now that they're making it a trait all based around, you can commit your abilities to confirming a kill, and then you get them all back to then convert your goal advantage. Uh, convert the advantage to the goal barriers and then to the goal itself. I think this is a really healthy change for Adrenaline Rush, and defining... Once again, this patch is all about defining where striker roles are and how your build should be. I think this is a really good change for Adrenaline Rush coming back. This is, once again, kind of like I said last canon, kind of like what I think Rampage will be. This was a game-winning trade all on its own back then. Stats and stats is bad, so pancakes, yep. Speed stacking up. So with Rampage, of course, with the recovery drone being in the game as well for size, w that is all about until you're KO'd. Pride Fighter's still in the game until you're KO'd. Stats and stats until you're KO'd. So that could be very volatile. And then we're getting Stagger City back. Okay, fair enough. So 
The fact that Sparks took 5 Awakening slots out of the 40, whereas Stagger City only takes 3 and can still be lottery built, will be interesting. I do think with the Stagger changes overall too, it will help out with some noise. Like it'll be a shore up for, if, say, your Octavia struggling and you just need some Stagger to help you out. Then yeah, Stagger City's here. But for the characters who have a lot more Stagger, so your Dolly's like your Dubu, your Atlas, getting a reverb, is more for your CDR, which is going to be really huge, for instance. So it's not just as dead of a water pitch as a spark would be sometimes in some situations. <coughs> Heavy Impact. Heavy Impact had quite the impact on last patch. Returning down its cooldown, you find capabilities to bring it full in line with other awakenings. Cooldown refresh 35 to 30%, match to on refund 7 to 3. Very healthy change considering how stupid, of course, Heavy Impact is Vice's guitar, she worked the best with it, it was the stupidest waiting for her, and the fact that you could just cycle your entire kit was really stupid too. Very healthy change, Heavy Impact was just once again its own trait, the fact that you, like, you'd want to deny that so much on a waiting draft too. Magnetized, 1.5 to 2, ooh, they're bringing it back in line, my favorite trait of se uh, my favorite gear of season 1, considering how I am basically exclusively a sweat kit or a siphoning vicious enjoyer. The fact that they are bringing that back and one with sweat kits is really nice and that's ah ooh ooh i might be picking that a lot more because i loved it so much but sweat kits just without a doubt outpaced it so much the fact that it's two second speed buff now means that counter presses counter attacks or being able to transition from offense to defense defense to offense for your midfielding role is that is really really big i do like that quick strikes less cooldown because of the fact that dribbling's gonna be way better now, but more energy. So it's your en de facto energy trade. Yep. Building, I think that was the bigger bigger thing with crit strikes, not just your faster strikes, but the fact that you just basically turned, oop, I dropped my phone stand, turned the entire um, energy, energy game point on its head, really big. Status Roger, getting debuffed on its way out, because of course you could have that in, in custom games, fair enough. Yep. Straight shot, nerf to the a uh, nerf to a cooldown by one second. Fair enough. Yep, fair enough. Team player getting tightened on close to medium. Yeah, I can understand that considering how you could sometimes just be super amazed by the speed and then just not get anything out of it. Time was trader getting buffed. Uh I don't know about that. I mean, it's still a really good trade, so we'll have to see how it goes. Unstoppable, getting better buffed. I think this is fine enough. Unstoppable was just already its own good trade by itself, but the fact is, is that um, with three defensive traits going out and with us basically only having one coming, oh, actually two coming in, the fact that it got a little bit more of a buff means it's soaring up its own defensive lock and lockiness. Fine enough, fine enough. And then just bud fits from there on. Creation Vistos with Dispute Point had too much creation duration. I did see that bug every now and then. Obscura no longer adds multiple stats onto Staggered, and now Treadly Slows. Very, very good considering how the slow zones were one of the most crucial parts about the uh, Obscura duration, uh, uh, Obscura configuration. But the fact of you didn't even have to kill an enemy, you could just leave them stuck in that zone forever. And now it makes it a lot more important to conserve your energy. Or just to not position yourself or waste your blinks if you do get stuck in there. Proof consistency of Astro Special once it's deployed. We always have an Astro Consistency patch, let's be honest here. Trevor Joan and Astro Special were revived parts while they're constantly in their staggered state. Yes! I did see that bug actually a good amount. Matra's primary now counts as part of primary for a purpose of awakenings. How did they not highlight that in uh in Mato's section? Because this is the same th or that is a very small thing that a lot of people may not have realized. But that's actually really big. It's like when they gave uh, Rasmus' Death Touch a the projectile and creation keywords. The fact that her projectile now turns as primary for awakening purposes too is actually really, really nice for just uh, for just for recognizing when it comes to uh, uh for incident for your awakening stacking for when you're getting hits and everything like that. And that's just really nice because now you can actually have. Uh, missile propulsion work, for instance, or so, or dead eye work, for instance. I can't believe they didn't put that in her section itself. I mean, I, yeah, okay, if it's a bud fits, considering how it wasn't working as intended, yeah, but I feel like that's a big highlight. 
Why is the now Dancer hit when Shield Stunner charges with the ability? Fair. I think it's just going in line with the new abilities generate. Uh, abilities Refresher Strike for helping her out with that end. With teleporting in immediately after. And also just, you know, it went in universal changes. Juno Bob was to pass backwards. You can see that. Stretch out trajectory as it's not that amp by Mr. Potion. Yep. That was something that you'd wonder sometimes why it didn't work. Missing lines. Okay, whatever. Okay. Overall, this patch, yeah, this is wild. So many things to take note. And the metagame, I think, will shift a good bit on its head in terms of... I think Etz is really just going to be a nice, more solid pick. I think um, Luna is going to come back in a lot more. But without a doubt, I feel that the biggest winners, if I can find them again, are your Speed Strikers. Era is just decent enough. Kai. Kai is wild. Octavia is stupid. And yeah, the, pre the fact that they're already preemptively tuning her already speaks volumes to where they think things are going to go. This is really, really stupid. So that's my predictions. I think speed is going to be the name of the game. I think Rampage is the stupidest trait ever. I'm going to take that and Stinger as much as I constantly can. And we'll see how things go. So that is my own rundown to it. But do be sure to call me out on Twitter, on YouTube, and call out how right or how wrong I was on that end. And I'll catch you all uh, back on back tomorrow when it comes to my daily upload schedule once again. So, wherever you are, wherever you may be, whether you're on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, or more, it's been your wonderful win maid, your cruise ship servant, Chargers Pratsy, ever and always at your service. Thank you, everybody, for coming in to my blind reaction to these patch notes. And, well... Thank you all for coming on by. Let's enjoy Season 3 of Omega Strikers, long live Omega Strikers, and hopefully I'll see you in my game sometime. At least from my side of the world here, have a good afternoon, and once again, let's see each other on the core strike fields.